Virgo, what's up? It's Kendrick from Providence Tarot. I'm gonna be giving you your proofread for the end of February. I'm using the, what are these cards? I'm just gonna stop saying that. I don't know why I forgot the name of these cards. You know, I just stopped looking at the box. They've been out of them for so long. I love using them. They're like kind of like a pagan type card. Queen of Cups is here, you know? So you're tapping into something emotionally, your feelings, you're getting, you're getting a sense of how you feel about something, you know, depth of feeling. This is related to the Three of Cups as well. You know, your intuition is kind of like on. I'm asking you to go with your gut here with this. You know what I mean? And you, it's almost kind of like an inner light thing. You're searching for like an inner light. You know what I mean? And also it's talking about emotional boundaries and protecting yourself in some kind of way, shape or form, right? But this is also having uh, positive uh, emotional experiences, right? And being aware that you are, you have the power to create <laughs> positive emotional experiences, okay? That magic lives inside of you. And you're Virgo and you are the, uh, the moon is actually the esoteric ruler of you, you know? Because it talks about how nature helps us achieve balance, you know? taking in water, taking in food, how we nourish our souls and our spirits, right? Make sure you're taking in good things, right? All right. So it also has to do with like, you know, your feelings light being brought to you, illumination, right? So it could be sharing your feelings or telling someone how you feel because this is communicating your feelings. The Queen of Cups is related to the Three of Cups. It's talking about how you feel, you know what I mean? So there could be some clarification of feelings, right? And this emotional boundary might be crossed a little bit or there might be a boundary that is crossed. So now you know how someone feels or someone knows how you feel or now you know what it feels like to or what it felt like when or whatever. You know what I mean? That's what the Queen of Cups is talking about. It's also talking about mem memories as well and codependent patterns, right? Patterns of codependency. Just because with the Three of Cups, the Threes are talking about patterns and multiplicity. Three of Cups is Cancer. Three is the third ray, which is associated with Cancer. You got the Cancer card here, which is Queen of Cups. That's, you know, mother issues, you know, that type of thing. Uh, feelings of abandonment, uh, you, you know, wanting to feel loved or be loved by the particular this or that it's like all of that shit is cancer right and be loved in this way so this is talking about how you are how you attract love right with this queen of cups right the love that you attract you want that to be you know uh, a love that is actually illuminated right light look at how much light is in this card it's crazy it's a full moon too okay so let's go ahead and see what else is going on. The strength card. So it's asking you not to force the situation. You know, let something happen naturally, right? And this is also having the courage and the strength, inner balance, inner courage, right? Emotionally strong, strong as well, too. You know what I mean? Not letting your emotions get the best of you, right? Being able to control your emotions, right? And your actions, too, okay? That's definitely what this is talking about. And it's talking about how, like, uh, you achieve balance through hard work. You know, hard work does pay off. And sometimes we have to, like, assert ourselves just to show who we are, what we're made of, and what we are capable of doing that maybe we had a weakness for before. You know, because the strength card is also indicating weakness because that's the opposite of that, right? strengths and weaknesses. So you could be weighing out strengths and weaknesses or pros and cons, right? Or the repercussions of something before something happens, right? Okay. So the Ten of Swords is talking about communication that brings something to a halt or brings something to an end or, you know, you're realizing that, like, you know enough now, right? <clears throat> um... You've been, you've been through a lot of different scenarios, right? And you've thought a lot about something. You almost are like beating a dead horse, okay? Uh, this is also saying like, it's time to leave a, a younger version or an old scenario, an old version of yourself, an old 
person that you identify with behind. You know, you can no longer go on with the same intentions that you did before, okay? And that's what the Ten of Cups is talking about, or Ten of Swords. It's related to the Ace of Swords as well. Did you get that? No, you didn't. But, you know, the Ten of Swords is saying, like, um, you were on a search for something, you know, and maybe you didn't find it. Maybe you did. Maybe you were satisfied in your search. Or, you know, maybe it's, it's asking you to trust trust what, what, what you know. Trust what you know, what's been shown to you. You know what I mean? It's like, take something for what it is. What is that song? Rumors? Take this for just what it is. I'm sick of people lying, saying what they want about me. Um, also, this is talking about the hard work and dedication that you put into something and it just kind of <coughs> fell flat, right? The hard work and dedication you put into something and it fell a little bit flat. Um, misguided intentions, right? not aware of the consequences, right? Right? The question is consequence, right? And were we aware of the consequences? Are we aware of the consequences, you know? Hopefully you do. And this is always, this is also coming to the conclusion of something, that something, something would be better, you would be better off, right? Being in your strength. Because something will only create, you know, something will only create more conflict, right? And this is talking about what you what you choose to ignore, right? Or what you might be forgetting about or what you might be neglecting, you know? Self-limiting beliefs or self-limiting actions, you know, getting in your own way getting involved with people or getting involved with situations that would only hold you back because this is Saturn and Leo and Saturn wants to be in Aquarius where it doesn't feel like it's being held back, right? Because Aquarius is like air, so you can't hold air. But this is Leo and Saturn is in its detriment there, right? So this is saying like something was holding you back or something was making you, you know, not be... You were, you were like not able to, to be yourself, right? That's kind of like what the Five of Wands talks about, not being able to be yourself. Trying to like, <clears throat> you know, manage yourself in a way where it identifies or it, it, it aligns with, you know, what other people's purpose or whatever their intentions are. But it's like everybody was following each other anyway, right? But there's like a little bit of kind of like a clusterfuck of something here. So it could be like work. And there's some issues going on with work where people are like kind of like, you know, fighting for power or fighting for like, I don't know, to be seen or get noticed, that type of thing. You know, it's competitive with the five of wands, right? <clears throat> it is related to, you know, passion, you know, maybe how passionate people are at work. Are people competitive? Are they compassionate? What am I saying? Are they passionate about the work or are they competitive with people at work? You know, what's their motivation? So uh, then we have like the six of swords here. It's talking about moving on from something, maybe moving on from a relationship because it's right next to the justice card and that's Libra, right? And that's also talking about bringing balance back to a situation, you know, uh, and justifying the decision that you made, right? And standing in that power of making that decision, right? and realizing that a, a decision was going to have to be made, a very definitive one, right? Or this is also kind of like, you know, this could be like processes of things that need to be taken care of that have to do with like uh, paperwork, you know, because the justice card is related to like legalities, things like that. Uh, or it could also just have to do with like, 
uh, legalities in a relationship, right? Or in a friendship where some things may have not been fair or not, the pros and cons, right? The hits and the misses, you know, like that type of thing. So it's like weighing out all of the things that have, that have occurred, you know what I mean? And now you can see what you maybe didn't see before just because you've had some time to think. And now you've had some further insight and knowledge, right? That has kind of like lifted a veil for you. Okay, you you put two and two together with some things, okay, I feel like, and now you're just ready to move on with the Six of Swords here. It's saying leaving rough waters and going into calm waters, but this is also kind of like a different way of thinking for you because this is like one of innovation, you know what I mean? And kind of like switching up the, the narrative, right? Changing the narrative, um, a fresh thinker, okay? It's also clear communication as well, you know, knowing what's going to be best for you and then, uh, you know, manager, managing your lives or managing the changes that you're making, I guess, making the changes based on what's going to be better for you. Okay, Virgo, you know, I feel like this is, uh, you need some freedom too. Right, especially with the justice card, freedom to choose and freedom to like, uh, um, you know, make 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 your own choices, okay. And freedom to make your own choices is related and connected to how someone else might be affected by the choices that you make or by the things that you want to do or where you want to go and how you want to be seen and all of that. That's what I'm talking about. And then we have the King of Pentacles here, which is like, you know, definitely putting something behind you. You know, Aries energy is behind Taurus. So it's like that's one third of it. And then Taurus is two thirds of this card. So it's like childish ways are done. You're more mature now. You know what I mean? And you're seeing things differently, right? I think, therefore... You know, I think I was this way. So now I, 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 I have changed. The King of Pentacles has definitely grown. And, it, it, and it's something... It doesn't want to let go of this new sense of um, independence or self-reliance. You know, because it's like self-reliance that brings independence or being free from something, right? So now I, I'm more self-reliant. It's like free your mind, right? And then when I free my mind, I'll be able to change my reality and I'll actually benefit from, you know, growing and evolving. And we, we should invest in change. And that's what the Six of Swords talks about, investing in change. I'm invested in this change. And then the Justice card, the Justice, Justice card, the Justice card also says that I'm invested in change. All right. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all at that, Virgo. Like, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Follow me on Instagram. It's Providence Tarot there. And my personal account is NYC Kendrick. If you want to get a personal reading, you can DM me there uh, on IG, or you can email Providence Tarot Kendrick at gmail.com. Bye.